Amos and his papyrus, but we'll talk about why they named these two. These two are the same thing. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, the Moscow papyrus, Ma uh, Moscow, so European. You see, you see what we're doing now? European. I don't even want to call it. We're going to rename it today. And the base head of Pharaoh, now Marty's the first great one who, who united uh, the upper kingdom and lower kingdom together. You got the Egyptian comedic leather roll with 26 de decompositions of unit fractions right here. The Berlin, I'm going to get a rename, the Berlin papyrus with two problems on it. The Reisner, I don't even know who that is. Get him out of there, and the Gahoon Patterns. I believe that was a city, one of the first cities that were planned as far as engineering is concerned. So we need this on here. But all these right here are your early evidence documentation relative to mathematics, right here. Right here. Got with me so far? Okay, we're going to deal with that first one in a second. <coughs> now I mean. So the almost factors. Most popularly known as the Rhine Mathematical Patterns. The Rhine. Now, it's only named the Rhine because this guy was a, Scot a Scottish lawyer and he bought it back in, what's that, 1858 and took it back to the museum in Europe. I can't remember which one it is. But that's the only reason why they call it the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus because this white guy bought it. So let's scratch that and call it the Almost Papyrus because he's the scribe who copied it back in the Middle Kingdom era. So this isn't an original we're going to look at. This is a copy. But he copied the original so they would have it in the Middle Kingdom era 4,000 years ago. Now with me on that? So that, that to me should be the more proper name. I'm those factors. Y'all good? Okay, now. Once I just said this. So now, look at the opening declaration on the almost factors right here. And this is where we start getting to the comedic view of math, right? Here. Look how they introduce math to the students. The right method of investigating nature to know all that exists, all mysteries, and all things secret. You tell me this. It's how you're going to introduce math. You tell me if this is what I'm about to learn, I'm excited and ready to go right off the gym. Right. I'm going to know all that exists, all mysteries, and all things secret based on math. Where's my pencil? I'm ready. Like, let's work. So that's how they introduced it relative to mathematics back in Kim. When you start studying this, you're going to know all that exists, unlocking all mysteries, all secrets. This is how you start math off right here. <laughs> you know, with Western world doesn't do that, right? <clears throat> totally different experiments. They confuse you. People are intimidated by math. Don't understand it. When they explain it, it's over our heads. Like, what are you talking about? They use the jargon, and it's ridiculous. <clears throat> you got it? Old school, you write it down sometimes. Like no pictures for real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work last week. Now, this is the translation by Dr. Theophile Ovega. Other people translated this too, but this is the best one. In my opinion, that's the best one. So now, this papyrus is divided into five sections. Arithmetic, stereometry, which is talking about three-dimensional measurement, geometry, calculations related, related to the pyramids, and then miscellaneous mathematical problems. This five sections composes the almost papyrus right here. So we're about to know all that exists, all mysteries, and all secrets. That's a math class I want to take. Yes. All right? So this is a picture of it. One part of it. One part of it. I mean, it was the copy of the original. I can't remember what museum, what European theft museum <laughs> has it costed. I don't remember. It's so maybe it's in France or something like that. I can't wait till we get to face to talk about how France, the difference between France and Britain when they colonized Africa and how that's going to relate to how we are now. Well, I can't wait for that. But anyway, back to this. So it's somewhere in Europe being held hostage at Jungle. Right? That's a part of it. Now, we talked about the five sections. These are how the problems are broken down on the almost package. It has 87 problems. Right? This is the foundation of all that. Yes, Mr. Jeff. It's in the British Museum. British Museum. There you go. See? The British. <laughs> Great Britain, huh? Yeah. We'll get more than that. Thank you, Jasper. Appreciate that. No problem. John on the spot. So, one through six, you had division. Yeah, your basic arithmetic, the first three. Division, multiplication, subtraction, the first three. The system we call algebra today, which, was, of course, wasn't called algebra back then, but the, the, the mathematical system we call algebra was problems 24 through 34. I believe 29 and, 28 and 29 were a thing of a number type equations within that 24 and 34. 35, 38, you can see that first level equations. 
You had calculating volume of shapes. You had the eye of Horus, which we'll look at in a minute. That's how they dealt with the system of fractions. They, have, they calculated the area of shapes, circle, rectangle, triangle. They had trigonometry, studying triangles right here. When I took this in uh, high school, they, it was completely confusing. I didn't even know it was about triangles. <laughs> I had an 85 in the class. How did that happen? That's Western culture for you. You can get a grade and you know nothing. We'll come back to that. Watch out. Differential fractions. Now all this now, this is four or five thousand years ago now. Right? Inverse proportions. Inverse proportions. Who knows what that is? Be honest. Right. Inverse proportions. Mr. Ron, I think you know. Miscellaneous problems for 79 through 87. But this, this is just a glimpse. This is a glimpse at what your ancestors understood and taught very well back in Kemet in relation to mathematics. Y'all with me? You know what I'm going to say. So now. This is the Moscow papyrus. We won't really get into this too much. This has about 20-something problems on it. This is a piece of it right here. This, of course, is in Moscow. We can rename it the Middle Kingdom papyrus. I'm down for that, since it was written in the Middle Kingdom. Why are we calling it Moscow? Hmm? You had nothing to do with this. And this map we're going to go over hasn't been improved upon in 4,000 years. That's what happens when someone who doesn't understand this map takes over. Right? Like Western culture. It hasn't been approved on in 4,000 years. Let's keep going. <coughs> this is how they would represent different numbers. There we go. In Kemet. So you see 1 and 1. You see 10 represented here. These are the symbols they used to represent numbers. And of course, we know Kemet and Tosseti were the first ones to take sound and represent it by symbol to give us alphabets and a reading system. Etc. Etc. Right. So what you're doing now, writing and reading, reading and writing, literacy, etc. Etc. All that originated now. Everything human beings are, are responsible for have come up into. It started with an African. Period. Got with me. So this example, if you want to represent 4622, 4622, you have to write it like that right here. Y'all see that? This one, 4000, the 600, and the 22. That's how a number would look. It only looks foreign to us if they, if we, if we switch roles, we go back there and they come back here. They'll look at this and be like, "What are these?" Right? It'll be vice versa. This would mean this. I knew it. All right. These are 37 formulas in trigonometry that I had to hunt for. But I got them. 37 formulas in trigonometry, all rooted in chemistry. So we're talking about unlocking mysteries and secrets, and they make sure that we don't get a proper grasp at any of this. Because prior to seeing this, I couldn't tell you how many trigonometry formulas there were. Couldn't tell. And even now, as I'm looking at it, this is like foreign language, right? Right. <laughs> Has it been approved upon in 4,000 years? This is your African genius that's in you right now. We get the right teacher, all of this starts to come in. Now with me on it. You get the right teacher, all of this starts to come out. Because one thing they don't teach us either is how to learn. They don't teach how to learn. And you can learn anything you want. Anything. And the African spirituality class we talked about, we have the ability to do, to achieve, and be anything we want. That's not a cliche after school special statement. That's for real. But you gotta know how to learn. Right? One way to learn is to do comparables. Take something I do understand and compare it with something I don't, and I can grasp the understanding. I'll use the Bible real quick. Only because the Bible is so easy to compare us. You want to understand the kingdom of God. In our finite form, you can't understand the kingdom of God. But I can liken it to something. I can liken it to a man who plants seed in the ground. Right? And then should water it and step back. And after a couple days, it comes up. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. That's the kingdom of God. Taking a farming principle I do understand, Comparing it to something I don't understand, which is the kingdom of God, now I have a, a sort of understanding. Y'all get me? Comparables and parables are how you can do that. Then you can understand relationship. Relationship's another way you can learn anything. What's the relationship between this water at this temperature and my skin? At a certain temperature, it's a great shower. I can rock with this. At another temperature, it's burning me up. At one temperature, it's cooking with food. Another temperature, it's not. Y'all got me? Another temperature becomes ice. I can put it in my drink. But if I understand the relationship between temperature and the water, I now can use this wisdom and apply it. 
See what I'm saying? So relationship and comparables, you can learn anything. They don't teach us that in school. We don't be in there confused. Say that again? Well, the teacher don't have any training. If you don't get it the first way they explain it, that's probably it. Well, see me out of school so I can take the same exact way. Yeah. Right. 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 So this is important stuff. So I would look at this in my normal Western mind and say, well, I don't need this anyway. But in that new mind, you say, all I need is the right teacher. I can understand all of this. No problem. It's a different type of confidence now. Right? Okay, we'll keep going.